welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Katie. I am a transfer student at UC Berkeley. I am currently a senior. Just had my first classes yesterday and today. It's the first week of school, so stay tuned for first week of school vlogs. I study anthropology and archaeology, and in today's video, I want to share with you some of the college essentials for back to school that I've come up with since coming back to campus and doing in-person classes for the first time. Real quick, I just want to say as an older student, as a neurodivergent, because I have ADHD, as a transfer student, and as some Somebody who's doing in-person classes for the first time, this is coming from a little bit of a non-traditional perspective. So since we are headed back to in-person classes, I've had to reevaluate what exactly it is that I need in order to be comfortable and successful throughout my day on campus as a college student. And before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that I did in fact buy a couple of things for my apartment and back to school that I'm going to share in a mini haul at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. All right, I've broken up this video into a couple of different categories. First, we have digital and technological essentials. Then I want to talk about physical school supplies. And lastly, some comfort items that you might want to keep in your apartment or in your backpack throughout the day. All right, so let's just jump right in and get started. Let's start with digital and technological. The first thing that I wrote down is Notion. If you don't use Notion or haven't heard of Notion, I highly recommend that you check it out. It's essentially a planning and organization app that you can use either on an iPad, your iPhone, or on a desktop. It is highly customizable and to be quite honest there is a little bit of a learning curve with it but it's what I personally use to keep track of all of my classes, all of my assignments. If I take typed notes it's where I store all of my notes. It's also the program that I use to organize my life such as like brain dumping or lists that I want to keep track of. I have an outfit library. I also use it to plan and organize my Instagram and my YouTube channel and I am also part of a business called Accepted Consulting where I'm the head of the transfer admissions department. So if you are looking to apply to transfer from community college to a four-year university or from one four-year to another four-year, come and find me at Accepted Consulting. I will help you with your application and your essays. But since I am a part of Accepted Consulting, we also use Notion to manage our business side of things. Notion overall is just a fantastic program, like I said, highly customizable, and you can use it for multiple things from life to college to business. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> Next, I have Google Calendar slash Google Suite. Google Calendar and Notion and a physical planner are the three different things that I use to keep organized. I find that each one kind of lacks in one area or another, so I use Google Calendar specifically for timekeeping and timetables. It's great for events, great for keeping track of when you have classes, when you have meetings, when you have accountability workshops or accepted consulting. And then I also recommend using Google Suites such as Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Sheets, whatever it is. I really prefer that over using like Microsoft Word because it's stored in the cloud so I can write something on my laptop and then pick up my iPad and take that to class with me and still have access to my documents without having to like download it and email it to myself, whatever. Google Docs, Google Suite, Gmail, Google Calendar. <laughs> it's very user friendly and it's very um, device friendly. So you can use it on Mac or iOS and you can use it on Windows and Android. And I just really like that. The next one that I have down is Adobe Suite. And this one has a catch to it. As part of being a student at a university, many universities have agreements to license certain programs through the, through the university for their students. So like for me at Berkeley, I have access to a free license for Adobe Suite, so I can use Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I use to edit my videos. And I get that for free through being a student at UC Berkeley. So I highly recommend that you check with like your technology department to see if there are any agreements between your university and programs such as Adobe. Next for technology, I have an iPad which you can see here, I'm reading off of at the moment. If this is something that's within your budget, I highly recommend getting an iPad, not only because it's great for taking digital notes, but it's great for taking digital handwritten notes, and it's much smaller and more compact than a laptop. I find that the iPad has a lot more versatility than a laptop. Sure, there are certain things you can't do, like edit YouTube videos, but you can get yourself an Apple Pencil so you can handwrite on here, you can draw, you can do design, and then you can also buy a keyboard 
okay, so if you want to type your notes, you can use your iPad for that as well. I also have written down here wireless earbuds in terms of technology. I think that wireless earbuds are a fantastic invention, especially as we are super busy students and we're constantly on the move and on the go. Wireless earbuds are a great option for us so that we're not having to deal with cable management. The only thing is for me, sometimes I lose my earbuds, but I still think that they are definitely worth the effort. And then lastly, for digital slash technology, I wanted to say don't bother buying a printer, okay? First of all, most universities and professors ask that we turn in our homework online now, especially since we just had a whole online year of university. So I really, really hope that no professors are asking you to turn in hard copies. But if they are going to ask you for a hard copy, you can go to your library or wherever it is that you need to print out papers and print out your papers there. It is really likely that you're going to spend less money on printing things out through your university than it would cost to actually buy a printer and the ink and the toner and the paper and have to replace all of those things every now and then. So personally, I don't have a printer. I usually turn everything in online and if I wanna print something out, I just go to my university's campus. Okay, the next category we have is physical school supplies. And the very first thing I have written down here is notebooks. And that seems really obvious, but you need notebooks. <laughs> now that we've got notebooks out of the way, the next thing I wanna say is a planner. Yes, I know that I have Notion in this video and Google Calendar and all that kind of stuff, but if you're like me, it might be helpful to have both a digital and a physical planner. For me and my ADHD, redundancy and repetition is absolutely key for my working memory and my ability to remember my assignments and when they're due. And my brain is very much out of sight, out of mind, so if I write something down on Notion and then I close my laptop, it ceases to exist. But if I have a physical planner open in front of me, it's right there where I can always see it and it will help me remember what assignments are due when. And I also just happened to buy a new planner today, so again, stay tuned to the end to see it. It's going to be in the hall. The next one that I have is pens and pencils that you like. Sure, you could go the easy route and just have a pen and a pencil, but I personally think it's really worthwhile to find pens and pencils that you actually enjoy using. For me, it's not just the fact that I like stationery and I like pens and pencils and pretty colors, but I also have some sensory issues that could become a problem for me. So I personally find it really important to have pens and pencils that don't cause sensory issues that I really enjoy working with, which makes my note taking in school much easier. So for me, I have my specific favorites. I really like the zebra pencils. I like Muji pens. I also like the Pilot G2 pens. And of course, when I'm feeling fancy, my fountain pens. In terms of physical school supplies, you don't really need anything else, if I'm being completely honest. And this is coming from somebody who's both been through the primary education system through high school and then spent four to five years in community college and is now doing university at Berkeley. The basics of notebooks, pens, pencils, and maybe some highlighters are super customizable. So I always say that whatever note-taking system works for you, whatever pens and pencils works for you, is what you should do. Personally, I have one notebook that I take with me to all of my classes. I call it my scratch notebook where I take all of my notes that I'm going to take in person and then I take those notes and I translate them digitally into my iPad when I can have access to my textbook, the recordings of lectures, and my slides so that way I can add in the information that I might have missed in class and I can better organize my thoughts on my notes on like my final notes so I can use it as a study guide in the future. But again, this doesn't work for everybody, so maybe trying out a multiple subject notebook, only an iPad, maybe voice recording your lectures if your professors let you, whatever it is that works for you. Everyone learns and studies differently, so take what I say and what anyone else says with a grain of salt. You don't have to do something a certain way just because somebody on YouTube told you to do it that way. Then lastly, for physical supplies, I have a comfortable backpack. This might not be something that everybody thinks about, but as somebody with the body of a 60 year old with tendonitis in like the entire right side of my body, comfort is very important. <laughs> especially if you are required to carry your textbooks or maybe some special equipment with you for whatever classes you're taking. A comfortable backpack that's not going to hurt your back or your shoulders is very important because you're gonna be carrying it across campus all day every day. Okay, moving on to the last category, I have comfort items. And these are just items that I recommend that you keep in your apartment or in your backpack because they're going to help make you feel more comfortable throughout the day. So let's talk about those. 
Number one is fidget toys. And I say fidget toys because fidget toys are not just for people with ADHD. Fidget toys are a really helpful tool for attention and focus for anybody. Whether you're in class trying to listen to lecture or you're studying in the library or you're trying to do your homework at home, having some kind of fidget might help you pay attention to what you're doing. It gets out that extra energy when you feel like you just can't pay attention. I have my favorites such as a fidget spinner. I have my, my little poppet here. It's like it's almost like bubble wrap it's very satisfying and then I also have a my conquering which is a little ring that you can wear that has a little spinner on it and I will leave that in the description below if you're interested in checking it out and then there are also some more inconspicuous ones such as calm strips which are these little textured strips that you can put on like a notebook or the back of your phone or your laptop so you can touch it throughout the day and help ground you and keep maintain focus and attention I will say though that if you're in a smaller class setting such as a seminar or an upper division course or a research or a lab or something like that, please consult with your professor first to make sure that they're okay with it and that it's not going to be a disruption to class. Next, I have hand sanitizers and masks. <laughs> yes, I know that we're all tired of talking about COVID, but it's still very much a reality and if your university has gone back to in-person classes like mine has, and your university also requires you to wear masks and door like mine does, <laughs> then I highly recommend keeping an extra mask in your backpack just in the event that something either happens to your mask or you accidentally left the house without yours, and then always keeping extra hand sanitizer in your backpack. Personally, just for me, is a peace of mind kind of thing and it's also like if I stop for lunch, I can quickly put on hand sanitizer if I don't have access to a bathroom to wash my hands. Next up is mini hygiene slash self-care items. Whatever this looks like for you, whether it's like a mini toothbrush and toothpaste, which I know I have because my ADHD makes me forget to brush my teeth sometimes, a mini hairbrush, mini hairspray, face spray to refresh your makeup throughout the day, extra cosmetics, bobby pins, whatever it is that you need throughout the day to feel your best is what I recommend keeping. I have this little pouch in here where I have my mask, my hand sanitizer, a mini brush, and then I also have an extra scrunchie in here and that goes in my backpack in case I need any of these things throughout the day. If you get a period like I do, I would also recommend keeping period products in here just in the event that something happens or if one of your friends needs something like that. Next is a water bottle, which again might sound really obvious, but y'all, I spent the first couple of days on campus without a water bottle and I absolutely regret it. My friend Zoe was sweet enough to buy me a brand new shiny hydro flask for the school year, which is going to be in the hall at the end as well. But the one I'm using right now is Lord of the Rings themed. It says not all those who wander are lost and I do love this one very much. And when I say that you should have a water bottle, I don't necessarily mean only for your backpack. Definitely keep one in your backpack so you can stay hydrated throughout the day, but I also keep a water bottle on me at my desk, next to my bed when I go to bed at night, just kind of around the apartment, especially again as somebody with ADHD. Self-care tasks can be especially challenging for me, so I often forget to eat or drink. Having a water bottle with me is definitely helpful for that. Next, in comfort items, I have sunglasses. And again, I feel like this one might be obvious, but it's one that I didn't think of, even though I have like five pairs of sunglasses sitting on my bookshelves. I did not pick any of them up and put them in my backpack, mostly because in the Bay Area, it's usually gray and overcast in the mornings and it doesn't get sunny until the afternoon. But like, for example, I went into class at nine o'clock when it was gray and overcast and cold and came out of class at 11 when it was bright and sunny and hot. <laughs> So if you don't have any sunglasses, I definitely recommend picking up a pair, or if you only have one pair of sunglasses, I'd recommend picking up another pair so you can keep some at home and then have extras in your backpack. Okay, my next comfort item is really good socks. <laughs> This is something I feel like I should have learned during my summer job as an archaeologist, but apparently I did not learn my lesson because I walked around in a pair of saddle shoes that hadn't been broken in yesterday and I have really disgusting blisters on my feet, which could have been avoided if I had thought to wear a different pair of socks. Especially if you're at a university like mine where everything is only accessible by walking or if you're like many college students and you don't even have a car and especially in the Bay Area there's nowhere to park a car, you're definitely going to be doing a lot of walking. So things like a really good pair of tennis shoes, a couple of really good pairs of socks are definitely going to be lifesavers. And lastly, I have a good audiobook or really just anything to listen to. This again might sound weird, but for some of us going back to in-person classes is going to be really overwhelming. One of the things that I like to turn to when I am feeling particularly overwhelmed is a really good audiobook. I tend to stick to kind of like the same comfort books. It's usually Harry Potter and specifically Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. But that pair of wireless ear 
earbuds and a good audiobook on your walk to class is, in my opinion, a great strategy for calming yourself, collecting yourself, gathering your thoughts before you have to go and spend a lot of energy socializing with your classmates and your professors. The only thing about this one is, is that situational awareness is very important for basically anyone who's not a cis white man. So I definitely recommend only using your headphones when you are walking to class when it's daylight outside and you're on a busy street. I would avoid doing it at night and I would avoid doing it when you're walking through like alleyways as a shortcut or something like that. So definitely situational awareness is more important than this, but it's just a coping strategy that I like to do when I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. So that is really all that I have for my college essentials. Um, I know that they probably came off a little bit weird, but this is again coming from a bit of a different perspective. I'm a little bit of an older student and I didn't, I know I didn't really have anything for my apartment because I have been living as an adult for quite a few years now. So I didn't have to do that whole big shop when you move to college to stock up my apartment because I've been collecting a lot of that stuff over the years. However, like I, like I said, I do have a bit of a haul for you. My mom took me to Ikea and bought me some new things for my apartment, so let's do a mini haul. First things first, I've been kind of obsessed with fridge organization lately, so I got one of these little like drink dispensers to put in my fridge because I really love sparkling waters and I have like some canned ciders and stuff like that. I'm gonna put those in here and I got the one with the lid so that I can like another tray on here. Um, however, fridge organization is actually kind of expensive so I only have one for now but I love it and I'm so excited to use it. Um, I've been putting off putting it in my fridge because I wanted to use it for this video. <laughs> I got just two little white bowls. I got them for having like dips and like oil and vinegar for charcuterie boards um, or like a cheese and salami board or cheese and bread board, um, especially because James comes and visits. I'm so looking forward to having like friends over and giving them food, so that's what that's for. In the same vein of thought, I got a mini cheese board, which I think is absolutely adorable. I also got this guy. I got it because it matches my cups and my wine glasses in my cupboard. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet, but I just thought it was absolutely darling. It's so cute. It's so pretty. I got another one of these. You guys have probably, if you've watched my vlogs, you've seen these. They're on my counter. I use them for like my tea and my sugars and stuff like that. This one's for oatmeal. Again, with food storage, I got some containers for leftovers or for meal preps. I got the glass with the bamboo top because it's the prettiest one if I'm being completely honest. They are relatively expensive, so I only got two, but I got the square one and then I got the rectangular one. Um, last thing for my apartment, I got a pitcher. I have another pitcher that's in the kitchen already, but it doesn't have a lid um, and I like to have a lid to keep things fresh especially for water, because if you put water in the fridge without a lid, it gets like gross tasting. Then for school supplies, like I said, my friend Zoe got me a new water bottle. And today, today I bought myself a new planner and they match. How cool is that? And oh my God, they match my, oh, they match my couch. I didn't even think about that. So that's very exciting for me. Then I got myself a bit of a treat. This is a pad folio um, that has the Berkeley crest on it. This is my scratch notebook for the semester. As you can see, I've been taking notes in here already. This was for historical archeology. span So this is gonna be in my scratch notebook, but a little elevated, a little fancy. And then lastly, I got a keychain for my keys. And then if we're talking about being fancy, um, I love fountain pens. I really do. And I do actually use them. So when I saw this at the student store, I knew I had to buy it. It's a Berkeley branded uh, fountain pen. You can kind of see it right there. It says Berkeley. Here, let me take it out of the package. I hope you guys know I've been holding on to this stuff for like weeks because I wanted to show you in a video before I actually got to use it. Um, so I'm very excited to finally film this video because now I can finally use these things. It comes in its own case and everything. I. I can't. That's what the nib looks like, and then the cap is where it says Berkeley. <sighs> so fancy. I love it. Okay, um, now that my apartment's a mess and it's like 2 o'clock, I have class in an hour, so it's time for me to go. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more UC Berkeley and back-to-school content. I'm so excited to get to share an on-campus semester with you guys. Check back in after this video because I'll be posting my first week of classes vlog. And leave me a comment. Let me know what is your number one college essential. I love hearing from people, especially because everybody has a different perspective. That's one of my favorite
favorite things about studying anthropology and I always respond to comments so leave me one below but I gotta go now so thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video bye